Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video we will learn a technique to loosely drape a cloth object over another object or shape and create natural looking folds and creases. So, let's get started. Let's go up to the main toolbar. We'll go to Customize. We're going to scroll down to Unit Setup. And we're going to select USA Standard Decimal Inches, then press OK. Next we'll go over to Rendering, Rendering Setup. We're going to scroll right down to the bottom to assign renderer. Now here in production, we're going to press on the small three dot icon and press mental ray renderer, then OK. Now we're just going to scroll up. I'm going to turn on force two sided and I'll carry on to output size, customize and behind customize, I'm going to select HDTV. Now the width I'm going to set to 640 and the height for 360 for this video. But my final result I'll render out at 1280 by 720. Okay, let's close the dialog. Now we can come over to geometry. We're going to create the background first, so we'll select the plane and we'll drag it out the size of the grid in the perspective viewport. Now we're going to change the colour. Just click on the little colour slot and we'll select a grey. Up to the main toolbar and click on the Move tool to activate the transform dials at the bottom of the screen. Let's bring the X and Y back to zero. Now we'll come over to the modifier and we're going to type in a length and a width of 700. The length and width segments will bring them back to one. Now let's go up and change the name. We'll type in ground. We're going to use a cone primitive for this video. We'll go to the create panel, geometry and select cone. Let's drag out a cone here in the perspective viewport. Just drag it out any size. We'll come over to the modify next and we'll set our radiuses there. Now here in radius 1 we'll type in 18. Radius 2 type in 10. Height, we'll type in 15. Our height segments, we'll bring them back to 1. Cap segments, we'll just leave them at 1. And inside, we'll just type in 32. Now we can maximize the viewport. Just press Alt W on the keyboard to do that, and Z to zoom in. We'll just change the name. We're just going to type in shape. Now make sure we have the Move tool activated, we'll drop down to the Transform panel at the bottom of the screen and bring the X and Y axis back to zero. With the object selected, right click and convert it to an editable poly. We'll go over now to the panel and select the Edge subdivision mode. Then we'll select all the edges on the object. Let's scroll down now to Edit Edges and we're going to click on Create Shape from Selection. Here in the dialog, we can just leave the name as it is and shape type. We'll select liner, then press OK. Let's go over now and turn off editable poly. We've just created a separate shape. Let's just move the original cone out of the way. We can delete the cone. There's just a few things to do now. So we'll select the shape, come over to the modify panel and here in rendering, We'll turn on Enable in Renderer and Enable in Viewport. Now if we rendered, we'll be able to see our shape. Let's scroll down a wee bit more now. We'll go to Thickness and let's bring the amount down. We'll bring it down to 0 0.5. Let's go to all four viewports. Press Alt W on the keyboard to do that. Now we're going to create another plane as our cloth object. So we'll go over to Geometry and select a plane. Now we can draw out a small plane in the top viewport. We'll go over to the Modify panel. And first of all, we'll change the name. Let's type in Lace Cloth. And then we'll go down to the parameters. And in length, we're going to type in 60. Width, 60. And length segment and width segment, we'll also type in 60. I'm using a lot of segments, so the cloth will fold and crease. I'm going to change the colours of the two shapes so we can see them a little easier for this video. You don't have to do that though. OK, now we can click anywhere in the front viewport to activate it. Then press Alt W to maximise the viewport. Select the plane. 
Now if we can't, we'll go to the main toolbar and click on Select by Name Tool. And here in the dialog, select Lace Cloth, then press OK. Now we can drag our plane up. Drop down to the Transform dialog at the bottom of the screen and bring the X and Y axis back to zero. Don't worry about the set, that's the height. To create folds and creases, we need to drop the object from an angle. So first of all, let's go to the top to the main toolbar and click on Angle Snap Toggle. Then the Rotate tool. And now we're going to rotate the plane 50 degrees. There, yeah, just watch the dial as you're turning. OK, when it's 50 degrees, we'll select the Move tool and we're going to drag it up. Now it's very important that you place it the same position as I have in this video. It usually takes a lot of trial and error to find the right position for the plane. Just type in at the bottom of the screen in the X axis and minus or negative 8.528 Y 0 and in the Z type in 46.5. Now we can go back to our four viewports. Press Alt W on the keyboard to do that. We'll just zoom in a wee bit here. Then we can go over to the modify list. Make sure we have the plane selected. And we're going to scroll down under object space modifiers and select the cloth modifier. Click on object properties and let's have a look at the dialog. Here we have the objects in simulation. You can see we have the lace cloth. Let's click on add objects to get the rest of the objects. Let's click on the ground, hold the control key down and click on shape. Then press add. Now we have all the objects we need to create this simulation. Let's start first with lace cloth. The lace cloth will behave as cloth, so check cloth. Then in cloth properties under presets, we'll select cotton. The default settings are fine for this video. Now let's go over and select our ground. Hold the control key down and click on shapes. These two objects will be our collision objects, so we'll go down and we'll click on collision objects, then press OK. Now let's go back over to the panel and we're going to scroll down right down to simulation parameters and we're going to turn on self collision and set it to 1. Also we're going to turn on check intersections. Now let's scroll back up again. Everything's ready now to start our simulation so let's press on the button simulate. Here we are, now the cloth dialog has appeared. Here we can control the progress, we can see the elapsed time, the last frame. Actually what we are doing is creating 100 frames. If you look down here on the timeline, you can see how the slider is moving along. But we're only interested in the last frame. If we look now in the front viewport, we can see how the, the plane is starting to fold and bend over the collision object. I'm going to turn the video off and I'll be back when it's finished. OK, I'm back. That didn't take long. Let's just play back our animation. The end result looks quite good. Very good, very natural looking. Let's just orbit around. We have quite a few folds and creases. Very good indeed. Very soft looking. If you're not happy though with your simulation, you can fix that. We'll just come back over here and click on Erase Simulation. And then scroll down a bit further down and then click on Reset State. And you can redo it. I'm going to scroll up now and turn on Simulate Local. This will just relax and soften the mesh a little more. I'll leave this on for a few minutes. OK, a few minutes have gone by. I'm going to turn off the Simulate Local now. I'm going to go back to all four viewports and zoom in here in the front viewport. Notice how the mesh is not exactly sitting on the ground. We can fix that. Firstly, we'll select the shape. I'm going to scroll down to the transform panel and on the Z axis, I'm just going to bring it up slightly, very, very slightly. Then I'm going to select the mesh and scroll down to the Z axis and I'm going to bring it down. I'm just going to bring it down slightly, very slowly. We want to place it on the ground, but we have to be careful that we don't go right through the ground. 
Let's just zoom out. Press RW and we'll go back to all four viewports. Here we are, we can see now the perspective viewport. Let's maximize the perspective viewport. Okay, so now our shape is penetrating the cloth object. That's all right, we can fix that. No problem. Let's come over now to the modify panel. First of all, we'll select our cloth object. We're going to scroll down under object space modifiers and we're going to select edit mesh. Now we'll go back and select another modifier. This time we're going to select an HSDS modifier. Now let's scroll down under advanced options and here in adaptive subdivision we'll click on the button and now in the dialog and parameters we'll select high then press OK. We've just added a lot more detail around our folds and creases. Let's go back over to the modify panel now and we're going to select another modifier. This time we're going to select a shell modifier. There we are, but we don't want it that thick. So let's come over now to our outer amount and we're going to bring it down. Let's type in 0 0.1. Okay, we can see that the shape is still penetrating. So we're going to do one more thing. Let's add one more modifier. We'll add an edit poly. We're just going to leave the edit poly as it is there in the stack. And we're going to go over now to the modeling tools and select freeform. Here we have a fantastic set of tools to use. We're going to use Shift. Take the time to read the instruction first. Now I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to hold the mouse down, just hold the mouse down, and I'm just going to nudge it up slightly. There, just very slightly. You need a lot of trial and error, but believe me, it's very easy to do. Now we're going to do the same here on the next piece. Just bring this up. We're just going to hold the button down on the mouse and drag it up very slightly. Don't worry, if you make a mistake, we'll just go up and undo it. Now we'll do this one. Very slightly. Just going to nudge it up. There we are, we can undo that. And I'll come back and redo it. I'm just going to orbit around and do the ones at the other side. This is a fantastic tool, really is. We'll just nudge this one up too. Hold the, the mouse down and just gradually, very slowly move it. Very slowly. Oh, I'll undo that. Now we'll do the last pieces. Okay, we can orbit around and see if there's any more to fix. I think that's okay. Let's go back into our free form and have a look at the other tools we can use from our paint deform. Relax and soften is another great tool. It's ideal if you're wanting to soften a few creases or relax a little piece of mesh. Just feel free to play around with these, these tools. Right click to turn off the paint deform tools. Now I'm just going to zoom out a wee bit. Just before we finish, let's add our last modifier. Make sure we have the cloth selected and we'll go up to the modify panel and we're going to select a UV map modifier. Here in the parameters, we're going to keep planar. And the length and the width, we're going to type in the exact amount of the plane. Let's select our plane again. Now here in the warning sign, we're going to click on hold yes. There we are, we've come back into the bottom of the stack and now we're inside the plane parameters. Okay, the length and the width was 60 by 60. So now we can come back to our UV map and type in 60 for a length and 60 for a width. Now we need to change the position of the UV map in the stack. Click and hold and we'll drag it down so it's on top of the plane and beneath the cloth. 
There we are. Okay, let's go back and click on the Edit Poly, which is the top of the stack. Let's orbit around. You can see we have some nice creases and some folds here on the top. I'm going to finish this video here, but I've created a second part to this video where you will learn how to apply a lace cloth material. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.